Hi class, welcome to the next topic that we're going to cover. Uh, we're going to go over the overhead cost. Remember our last class, the last video went over raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. Well, what we're going to concentrate on right now is the overhead within the work in process. Remember, with work in process, we're going to have a beginning balance. Now, these are the items that were already in there when we started the period. During the period, we're going to add raw materials, direct labor, and overhead to manufacture our product. We're going to use the same example that we used in our last video where we're making a chair. Now we could be making lots of different things, but our business, let's say, makes furniture. And these are wooden chairs, but we also make tables. But what, right now, let's just concentrate on the chair. Okay, so these items go into it. When we finish the chair, it needs to be transferred out of work in process and go on to the next area, which is finished goods. Okay, let's continue on now with this overhead. How do we get the overhead in here? With materials and labor, that's pretty easy because you just go to the material storage place and you grab some lumber and you know how much it costs and you transfer it into work in process. Labor's the same thing. Our people that are working, they're filling out time sheets or time cards. We know exactly how long they're working and their, their rate, so we can just put that into work in process. Overhead's a little different. Remember, those are the indirect costs, the costs that don't go directly necessarily into the product. But we need to put them in here. So let's, let's think of what might happen if we got our utility bill. Our utility bill came in, and now we need to allocate it to work in process. But remember, I said we might manufacture more than one product. Let's say we're manufacturing chairs and tables. The utility bill comes in. How do we divide it between the two products? You don't want to put all of the utility bill into the chair's work in process because the table has a separate work in process. So do we divide it between the two? What do we do? Well, we've got to think of a logical way to allocate this overhead between the different products that we manufacture. So what I like to do is say that we have an overhead pool. We have an account, an overhead account, where all the actual actual overhead costs go into this account. Now, how do we get in from this account into our work in process? How do we transfer them out of this account into our work in process account? Well, we're going to apply them separately. And there's a formula we're going to use. We're going to use something called a predetermined overhead rate. So let me erase this and put down the formula that's in your textbook for the predetermined overhead rate. The predetermined overhead rate equals our estimated overhead divided by some activity base. Estimated overhead divided by an activity base. So what we need to do is we need to estimate how much overhead we're going to have this year. And usually that's done based on past history and any changes we expect in the current year. So we're going to estimate what our total overhead is going to be, and then we're going to choose some sort of activity base. A very common one is direct labor hours because we're already accumulating direct labor hours. But you could use square footage, you could use direct labor costs, you could use almost anything that you want that's associated with the business that you accumulate information on. So let's say, for example, I'm just throwing out some numbers, let's say this year we estimate that our overhead is going to be $1 million. We estimate overhead, now obviously this is just an estimate, we estimate our overhead this year is going to be $1 million. And let's say that our direct labor hours, we're going to use an activity based of direct labor hours. Let's say we estimate that direct labor hours will be 100,000 direct labor hours during the year. Then what that gives us is $10 per direct labor hour. $10 per direct labor hour. So every time one of our employees that's putting together this chair works an hour, What's going to happen? $10 will go into overhead. So remember, remember I have this overhead account. Actual overhead goes in. So every time we have actual overhead, like a utility bill, 
glue, nails, uh, a supervisor's salary, I'm not going to write all that. But every time we have actual overhead costs, we're going to put them into the overhead account. Then they're going to come out of this overhead account, out of the overhead account, and go into work in process whenever an employee works an hour. Every time an employee works an hour, $10 will come out of overhead, will come out of this account, and go into work in process. So that's how we allocate overhead uh, into the work in process. We used a predetermined overhead rate, which we estimate overhead divided by some sort of activity base. This information has to be given to you in any problem. You can't guess it. Okay? When you're doing accounting in this class, this information has to be given to you. Then you'd have to calculate what the overhead rate is, and then they'd have to tell you how many direct labor hours or whatever the activity base is. If it was square footage, then you'd have to know, well, how much square footage does the chairs have? Okay? Now, at the end of the year, what's going to happen is you're going to have so much overhead, actual overhead going in here. So let's say we have 999000 of actual overhead in here. Let's say we apply 950000 So if we put in 999 and only 950 came out, what's happened here? Have we over-applied or under-applied our overhead? Well, if we put in 999 and only took out 950, then we still have 49,000 in here, so we under-applied. We didn't apply enough. So now what happens? Well, this overhead account isn't an account that we use in our financial statements, so we have to zero it out. It has to be zero at the end of the year, at the end of the period. So that 49,000 where will it go? Well, the easiest thing to do is to just put it into cost of goods sold because where do all these costs eventually end up? Remember from the previous video? All these costs go into work in process, <clears throat> then they go to finished goods, and then they eventually get sold and go to cost of goods sold. So a lot of businesses, the thing that they do is they just put that 49000 directly into cost of goods sold because that's just the easiest way to do it. Other businesses might investigate it and analyze it and figure out well, how much should go here in work in process? How much should be in finished goods? How much should be in cost of goods sold? So there are two ways to do that. You can put all of the over or under applied into cost of goods sold. If it's under applied, you've got to put it in there. If it's over applied, then you've got to take some cost out of there. Or you can allocate it between the three costs, between the three inventories, work in process, finished goods, and then your expense, cost of goods sold. Okay, I hope this has cleared things up a little bit for you. This is a very tricky chapter. You're probably going to have to read through it a couple times and maybe watch this video two or three times to really cement it in because it is complicated, I realize, and that's why I put together two videos for this chapter. Well, good luck.